Good afternoon, everyone. A respected chair. Uh, thank you, organizers, especially Sanjay, for inviting me. I'm going to uh, present on India's response to the U.S. rebalance, and I'm going to argue that uh, Obama administration's new renewed focus uh, in Asia Pacific region has been appropriate and long overdue. Structural changes in Asia Pacific region, and especially due to the emergence of rising powers like India, China, and Japan, and also the uh, growing weight of the Asia Pacific region has uh, led and underlined a situation where America's strategic assurance and presence has been needed. Whether these emerging powers could peacefully exist and collaborate and cooperate with each other remained an open question. And hence, in this backdrop, I'm going to assess India's uh, policy towards the re uh, towards US rebalance and I'm going to argue that even though uh, India has not explicitly endorsed the rebalance strategy in any of uh, Indian government's official document but several of the um, policies that the uh, the government had undertaken um, suggest that it explicitly or implicitly um, promotes uh, like US's rebalance in the region. Uh, India has often been regarded as the linchpin of the US pivot and it has welcomed uh, the deepened engagement in uh, the region. While privately India has been pleased to see America's enhanced role in the region, several other regional players, like several other regional players, India uh, would keen to uh, avoid a situation having to choose between the US and China. Uh, I'm going to talk about the several uh, levers through which uh, India has uh, implemented such policy. Uh, the first is partnering with US and bolstering India's defense diplomacy, promoting Asian security with India's eastward orientation, working and partnering with regional actors to shape the balance, and also engaging in engaging China where it can and hedging China's influence where India must. One of the most important um, strategies India has been following or has tried to follow is build its own national comprehensive power. And whilst India has tried to adopt these measures in varying degrees, none of these levers are mutually exclusive. And all of these strategies do well fit into uh, the US rebalance strategy. In several uh, US official documents like the National Security Strategic Doctrine, uh, which was released in February 2012, also the De Department of Defense Maritime Security Doctrine, uh, India features and looms very largely. US has always endorsed that India, uh, it's going to assist India to take a more uh, important uh, and pivotal role in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, India's U.S. Joint Strategic Vision document not only serves as a roadmap, but also hinges on the possibility that both the countries would cooperate with the assistance of Japan um, and create a, a regional uh, security architecture which would promote and be inclusive uh, where, uh, and where uh, uh, territorial differences could be uh, managed within, uh, the, within uh, a more... Uh, rules-based framework. Uh, India's uh, defense uh, with the U uh, U.S. stands at 14 billion uh, now uh, within a span of uh, a decade and uh, both the countries are trying to cooperate with each other on a two-way uh, trade. Uh, this has especially taken place under a Modi government where India has uh, promoted uh, along with the U.S., the Defense Technology uh, Trade Initiative, where uh, both the countries are uh, looking at four Pathfinder projects. Recently, the Pentagon has established uh, a first country special cell called India Rapid Reaction Cell to intensify uh, defense ties with India. Whilst uh, the two countries are working on the four Pathfinder projects, the Pentagon is already processing and evaluating 25 more other projects for joint development and co-production. India's uh, look, traditionally the look east policy has now morphed into act east 
and uh, it has gained tremendous momentum under Prime Minister uh, Modi. Do uh, Dr. Rajamohan argues that the end game of the Modi doctrine is to re-establish India's strategic influence in the Indo-Pacific. And uh, this is important because it has always been endorsed uh, by all the uh, U.S. official documents and uh, U.S. is promoting India to take a more leadership role in the region. Uh, to bolster India's act east, uh, Prime Minister Modi has also drawn up an ambitious plan to transform the Andaman Nicobar Islands into the country's first, as the country's first maritime base. Uh, India's position on South China Sea has been changing. Consider uh, the remarks of uh, India's uh, then naval officer, Admiral Nirmal Kumar Verma, in 2012, where he said that Indian deployments in the Pacific and South China Sea was not in on the cards. Uh, to 2014, where India-US uh, issues a joint statement and raises concerns of territorial disputes in the region. Cooperating with regional partners is another important uh, arena which has also uh, re-plugged well into the, um, India's response to the rebalance strategy. Uh, cooperating uh, with uh, Japan and the recent uh, elevation of uh, trilateral dialogue uh, with the foreign ministerial level with ja Japan has uh, given a lot of traction to tripartite relations. Recently, India, US, and Japan uh, concluded the Malabar exercise, and it's, it was important because it focused on anti-submarine drills. What is uh, also important to note uh, is that uh, India has always been consistent uh, and adopted a hedging policy of not uh, conducting these naval uh, game uh, in the Bay of Bengal region because that has always been uh, construed as uh, that China would take uh, into concern these, uh, the Bay of Bengal as a sensitive area. But uh, it, it, it's so that India is coming out of a shell and from a more ambivalent policy, it's taking a more leadership and proactive role in the region, which is very noteworthy. Uh, one of India's partnership with uh, Vietnam is another area which uh, plugs well into the larger picture of India's evolving response to the U.S. rebalance. Uh, this year marked the 20th anniversary of restoration of uh, U.S.-Vietnam ties, and uh, that uh, uh, Secretary Carter visited uh, Vietnam and then he came to India and during the Shangri-La dialogue he mentioned that uh, U.S. is always looking ways to complement India's activist policy also uh, sends a strategic signaling and, and uh, uh, promotes India's leadership role in the region. India has extended 100 uh, million credit lines to Vietnam and that is a paltry uh, sum considering uh, the important role India expects Vietnam to play in the region. Uh, there needs to be an intensification of the scale and speed of engagement with uh, Vietnam and towards this direction uh, the supply of four offshore petrol vessel vessels in the region uh, to Vietnam has been an important uh, event in bilateral ties between India and Vietnam. One of the other areas which uh, both India and U in Vietnam can explore is uh, providing training on grounds uh, to Vietnamese forces because uh, Vietnam is now uh, acquiring the Russian Kilo class submarine and uh, which India has been uh, using for years. Cooperating uh, with other regional partner, Indonesia uh, is another potential partner, even though it has not emerged in a very big way within uh, India's strategic thinking when it comes to the region. But recently, Indonesia's vice minister stated that uh, Indonesia is looking at India as a potential defense partner, especially in the procurement of arms. As, India, uh, as Indonesia is trying to achieve a minimum essential force by 2020. So that is one uh, area which India could explore. Uh, whilst no Indo-Pacific uh, framework can exclude China, and I think there were a lot of uh, excellent uh, presentations through the day which explain why it is so, working with China for India would always be walking a uh, the tightrope of real politics. 
India's strat strategy, according to me, uh, is uh, it has been hedging China's influence where it can, uh, especially in the Indian Ocean region, even though Ch Chinese presence has uh, become a reality. India is trying to manage uh, the rise of Chinese naval profile in the region. And also working with China where it could, uh, especially even though we have uh, much differences on uh, China's relation with Pakistan or um, on the border issue, but uh, India is trying uh, to work with, uh, with China on trade and economic investments. Uh, developing India's comprehensive national power, uh, there are uh, diverging opinion uh, within and amongst India's security experts. Uh, whilst most say uh, that India needs to uh, bolster its hard, uh, hard power and uh, the way uh, the way to go uh, ahead with it uh, has been uh, diff different for different uh, security planners of India. Uh, former NSA Shiv Shankar Menon has said that India should speak softly and carry a big stick and uh, his policy has been more inward looking that India should focus on getting uh, the defense uh, manufacturing sector in line or uh, probably uh, bolster its economic engagement with the region and develop its economic base. Uh, other experts, uh, especially uh, Bharat Karnad in his uh, recent book, uh, Why India is Not a Great Power Yet, advocates more provocative options like uh, India should resume thermonuclear testing or prosecute a tit for tat policy with China, like by nuclear arming Vietnam. So, whilst there are a uh, differential opinion on how India should bolster its um, national comprehensive power. Uh, there are specific pockets which India and U.S. should look at, uh, especially when it comes to bolstering uh, India's rebalance uh, narrative. Uh, especially this comes uh, that uh, since TPP is an economic arm of the rebalance strategy and India is not a part of TPP and there has already been forecast that India is going to face trade diversion effects, India should take this opportunity to intensify its bilateral investment treaty initiative. Talks on, and, um, talks on HADR operations with U.S. is gaining currency and especially this was uh, evidenced when um, India embarked on Operation Maitri in uh, Nepal uh, where uh, India and U.S. forces worked uh, hand in hand. Uh, there's another uh, important area where uh, both uh, India and U.S. are working together is women empowerment and trying to scale up uh, women uh, skill enhancement. And uh, whilst we are always focused on the security narrative, these uh, smaller eff efforts by government get lost in the bigger picture. And uh, but then this is becoming a recurrent theme, uh, and uh, it was uh, evidenced in. Uh, the India-US-Japan trilateral joint statement, it said that uh, all the three countries are exploring uh, ways to um, enhance uh, women empowerment and uh, also look at uh, uh, security of fishermen. So these smaller efforts in non-traditional security initiatives are also important and uh, plugs well in the, U the evolving US rebalance uh, narrative. So I want to conclude by saying that uh, there is not going to be any dearth of uh, big ideas to define uh, and provide steam to India-US relations. We have uh, seen uh, US calling India the linchpin of its rebalance strategy or uh, like defining like uh, like first partners or strategic plus partners and recently there has been a study by uh, Joseph Nye which says that uh, India and US can uh, complement each other's security goal in the Asia Pacific region by uh, by uh, forming a joint uh, venture cooperative security in the region uh, all all these initiatives uh, are uh, really going in place but uh, some of the differences, especially on climate change and trade and initiative, can act as barrier in uh, enhanced cooperation between the two. Uh, 
Uh, but mostly in Asia-Pacific region, there is a growing complementarity of interest. And uh, it would be interesting to examine India's role as an emerging power and how critical it is to anchor uh, U.S.'s uh, policy in the region. So uh, I would conclude with that. Uh, thank you.